everybody and a big happy Thanksgiving to you all. Uh, I was preparing dinner this morning and last night <laughs> and this afternoon anyway. Um, I had a couple of quick little recipes I thought I'd share with you while I was at it. Um, our first one is going to be cranberry sauce. I picked these gorgeous cranberries down by the pond. I know I'm super blessed yesterday. So um, in my pot I have two cups of water, sorry, <laughs> half a cup of water, two cups of cranberries here. And to that half a cup of water, I'm going to add the zest and juice of one orange. This is my last orange. It should be okay, but before I cut it, good one for you, I think I'm going to zest it first so it make it easy. Make sure you wash it. You don't know what they're spraying on things these days. So I'm just going to zest that directly into my pot that I've got on high already. I want this nice and hot when I go to add my delicious cranberries. This orange smells amazing. <laughs> and I hope you guys had an amazing Thanksgiving. I sure hope my turkey and stuff is going to be good. I'm sure it is. Hubby helps stuff it. It's in the oven. And uh, yeah, got some company coming. It's going to be really great, I hope. Okay, so I got most of the zest off of this orange and into, don't forget the underneath side. There'll be lots of stuff on there. In there. And to that now, I'm going to cut this open and juice this orange. And I'm thinking it's going to be juicy because. It's my last orange. <laughs> so it's been there, yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm thinking I'll have a good quarter cup of orange juice or more. And you can absolutely skip the water and just add all orange juice, depending on your taste. My goodness, juicy Florida oranges. Anyway, I'm gonna add this now, the full juice to my pot. Now, that's starting to come up to a simmer. If you desire, you can certainly flick in a, um, a cinnamon stick. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to put this in here with my cranberries. And to that, I'm going to add about three quarter cup of sugar. Um, again, you can do this to taste, but you want you know, close to at least half the amount of uh, sugar to berries. And I had two cups of berries. So uh, most times you would use one cup, but I'm uh, you know, watching the calories. So I'm gonna put my three quarter cup of sugar right in there. And I'm gonna give that a little stir. And last but not least, and this is totally optional, I have some maraschino cherries. I absolutely adore them. So I think what I'm going to do is add maybe a tablespoon or so of the juice. Let's do two. So we got two tablespoons of maraschino cherry juice. And we're going to add some cherries. And I just got my scissors here. And I'm just going to, you can half them or quarter them or whatever you want. You could totally omit them. You can use the frozen bag of cherries if you like. You can, yeah. Do whatever your little heart desires when it comes to the cherries in your cranberry sauce. But it does add a beautiful, beautiful flavor. You can hear my pot just boiling on the stove. I do have the fan on low, but it's not too noisy. So I've got some cra uh, cherries <laughs> in here with the juice. And that's really starting to come up to a boil there now. And my friends, Tammy and Dale, they were out to her father's house last weekend and bought me a giant bag of these beautiful apples. And they're the nicest apples as soon as you bite it, one, like, they'll probably squirt you on the arm or something like that. Super juicy. So, and this is, again, 
totally optional. I'm just going to cut up a few pieces of these and add right to, you can hear my berries starting to pop. Yeah. I think I've peeled an apple or two in my day. <laughs> and so just, I don't know, a few little pieces would be good. Uh, we'll just kind of cube them up a little bit and add them directly to the pot. And not only will this give it some flavor, but apples are very high in pectin, and then the pectin will in turn thicken up your sauce. Works with jams and things too. I always add a little apple to my partridge berry jam, or any jam really that's uh, low in pectin that needs some help. Berries are really bursting with joy because they're going to be eaten. <laughs> and if you want, you can like, once it starts going and you can hear the berries popping, you can certainly go ahead with your potato masher and uh, yeah, mash some of that down. Now, this needs to go for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. I'm going to turn down the heat just a bit. And in the meantime, I have another beautiful recipe that I'd like to share. Um, and this one comes from my sister, Mary Lou. She has some really great recipes, including that gorgeous carrot cake that's on my website. You can check that out. Which, I've, I've, it's like a zucchini carrot cake with walnuts and crushed pineapples and coconut. I did some candy pecans. That's my dessert for today. I sure hope everybody likes that. So, my next recipe is turnip bake. What we're going to do is take a dish, maybe like an 8 by 8 would be good. Um, my other friend, Marion, grows these amazing turnips that are really big. Um, and she had given me two bags of turnips, so I've got what I did was I cubed and mashed, I uh, cubed and boiled my turnip until it was, you know, fork tender. And then I took it and I mashed it just like you would for dinner with butter and pepper. And now I did this yesterday to save some time. So I'm going to just kind of put that out into my dish which I probably should have sprayed with a bit of Pam. But anyway, I guess I'll be scrubbing dishes later. I do have some butter in here, so hopefully that'll prevent it from sticking too, too, too much. And this is one of Marion's turnips, two of a regular store-bought turnip, I would say. Bloopers, we gotta love the bloopers. Anyway, my, my very sure are going. And you want the heat up nice and high because that's what helps thicken it up too. And the steam is wonderful for your skin. <laughs> so we got our turn up and we gotta put in a dish. Now, what I'm gonna do is take some more of the gorgeous apples. And I did this earlier, so some of my apples might have a little bit of brownness on them. Um, just from the oxidization. So we peeled them and we cut them in like little tiny kind of slices. And we're going to kind of scatter those all over the top of the turn, Like so. So this will be like an apple turnip bake with a crumble something different and something nice for Thanksgiving. My sister makes this every time she has turkey. They absolutely love it. So we got our apples all kind of arranged on top of that. Now I am going to make a little more room and I had to be a show off with my cake. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do is make the crumble. So, if you, you can double this crumble recipe if you've got a bigger um, 
pen, like a 9 by 13 or something. So I've got a half a cup of all-purpose flour in the bowl. Make sure you get it all. I got a quarter cup of white sugar and a quarter cup of brown sugar. I'm also going to add to this a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, just regular ground cinnamon. So, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of give that a stir up with my fork, just to kind of combine all the uh, ingredients together. That sauce is looking so good. And I know this is a little longer video. I totally could have done two videos, but I'm a little pressed for time today with, you know, the in-laws coming and being Thanksgiving and all. So, we've got that kind of, you know, all mixed together. You want to have the flour and the sugar and the cinnamon and everything all combined. Now to that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of butter, real butter, cold, cubed. And what I'm going to do, you can use, certainly use a fork for this, but I'm just going to use my hands now and kind of uh, mix it all together so we get like a crumbly mixture, kind of like when you're making a pie and you're making the crust and you need like, you know, little pea-sized pieces. That's what we're looking for here. And you know, if they're a little bigger than peas, it's okay too. All good. This part takes a minute, but it's nice therapy for your hands. <laughs> it's been a beautiful fall. Summer was amazing. I had lots of swims in. Lots of visits with family and friends. A little chunk of butter just hit the floor. <laughs> I was going to use a bigger bowl, but I really don't have much room here. Now. I think I'm just about here. So you can see I got some bigger little bit, bigger bits and some smaller bits of the butter and it's all kind of combined together. And as you're sprinkling this on, now if you have any really big chunks, you can certainly break them up a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do now is take this crumble and we're going to put it all over the top of these beautiful apples and gorgeous turn up. <laughs> My mother-in-law, God rest her soul, when she would go to the grocery store and she'd see something on sale, she'd get so excited and I'd come home and she'd be like, oh my God, look at the gorgeous can of green peas I bought today. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my. She was just such a wonderful woman. She thought everything was gorgeous, including green peas. I think she was gorgeous. Certainly a wonderful, wonderful person. Miss her dearly. Now, that's the crumble. And that was actually the perfect amount for that. So, this is going to be baked in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. I hate to wait my hands in this towel. Look, it's so pretty. One of my Facebook friends made me this. Feather. <laughs> anyway, now what I'm going to do now is just, oh my God, I've got that turned right down. You can see this now, that it's starting to, maybe you can't see with the steam. I will put a little bit out in this ramekin so you can see. It's starting to. Oh my, if you could just smell this now. And this will absolutely thicken more as it cools. Look at that, gorgeous color. Everything has softened off the apples, the cranberries, the cherries, and I want to taste, but I'm so afraid I'm gonna burn myself. Hang on, I'll blow on it. Somebody once told me that when you blow on your food that you're blowing away all the goodness. I don't believe that. I think 
think I'm being kind to myself. <laughs> Oh, and that's perfect. And it's got mm, the right amount of sweetness with a bit of tartness, and you can absolutely taste a hint of orange. I hope you guys are having an amazing Thanksgiving or had an amazing Thanksgiving. Give these recipes a try. You won't be sorry until, I don't know, next time, I guess. Happy baking! <laughs>